All right, guys. Hey, welcome back to the Failing Science Podcast, where we talk all things precision rifle. Um, for, first things first, I apologize for missing a few weeks. It's kind of been crazy. Uh, the match schedule has been uh, pretty nuts, and uh, orders have been going. Uh, thank you, guys, uh, from the bottom of my heart. Y'all are y'all are freaking awesome, and it's and all you international guys. Uh, thank you, guys. I really appreciate y'all, and I'm looking forward to. Uh, the world championship but today this is one i'm really excited about i've got a good friend of mine dan Harride, with raven rifles and we're going to talk uh some about his business and and some competition and some things like that so dan thank you very much for coming on man i've been looking forward to this one yeah man anytime so um Dan, Dan started a, a business called Raven Rifles, and I want to get into a little bit of, of what you're offering, um, what your services are and stuff like that. So can you give us kind of a quick rundown of, of what you're doing? Yeah, sure. So I started this in January. It's been, I don't know, a thought of mine for probably 12 months prior to that. Um, long range training is one of the big things. Uh, it's geared more towards hunting uh, and even some NRL hunter. A um, little bit of competition training here and there for, for other disciplines uh, like PRS. Um, and Cerakoting, I've got a full shop here, full service Cerakote shop here at the house. Uh, and then also building purpose-built custom rifles uh, for those training clients. Uh, mainly hunting rifles is, is what we're doing. Hell yeah. And so, and for, for, for those that don't know Dan, uh, He's been around the precision rifle world for for a bit, and he he's won some national level PRS matches, um, some national level NRL hunter matches. He's an incredibly accomplished hunter. Um, I got the opportunity to train with him, and and we'll kind of dive into that some. But um, so for those for those listening, kind of give me. I guess who who would be like your your target client for um, someone that's that's looking to to train with you? Uh, really, I'm trying to stay in the lane of the hunting crowd. Um, the market's a lot bigger, but there's a lot of people that have, I mean, I guess I say financial means to go spend a good amount of money on equipment. Um, and a lot of these guys have spent their life, you know, hunting whitetails out of a box blind or whatever, hundred yards, and they buy this equipment that's very capable but they are not capable of making longer shots. And I'm not, I'm not promising people to go out and start shooting at animals at a thousand yards away. I, I disagree with that mentality. Uh, but really it's about just training them how to efficiently use not just their rifle, but all the equipment that goes along with it uh, and, and, and increase their confident distance in taking animals. Um, but yeah, the target crowd, I'd say, man, I've trained everyone from late teenagers all the way into people who are retirement age just people who want to get out in the woods and effectively use their gear. Awesome. Well, and so that's, that's something um, I, I think it's really interesting. So, and for those that don't know, I started shooting uh, or competing in NRL hunter this year and um, I, I've been wanting to do it for a while, but I finally got a rifle built and uh, I went and shot my first NRL match with Dan and he, he was a big part of kind of helping me prepare for that and, and, you know, kind of giving me some tips and stuff. But one of the things I noticed, um, is there's, there seems to be a pretty large amount of, um, new competitors when we show up to those matches. Um, you know, they'll always ask, you know, who's, who's, is there, is this your first match? And, and there's generally a pretty good amount of people. Um, and so it's either, you know, people that are new into competitions or new into this style of shooting. Um, and I've seen the same thing, like, you know, a lot of people will grow up hunting and it's the same thing, you know, we'll sit in a box blind or, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's hundred, 150 yards and, um, very basic, but I think, um, and this is kind of where I want to get some of your input on. I think uh, a lot of people are kind of stuck on um, the old, like, you know, the hunting rifle looks like your grandpappy's old 30 out six and a wooden stock. And you, you know, sit in a box blind, you're shooting, you know, it's unethical to shoot past a hundred or 150 yards or whatever. And I think, um, you know, 
obviously that's not the case, but I think it's um, slower to for people to grasp yeah. um, that our equipment is very capable. And um, once you become proficient as a shooter and with your equipment, that you can do some pretty remarkable things. Um, and so I think it's especially for, for those listening, I mean, it, so can you, and, and I don't know if you have your, can you give a, a rough idea of, uh, like a price range, um, for, um, like what your training runs? Yeah. Training 750 a day, uh, for new guys, I'd like to spend two days with you. Um, really to get your gear all tuned up fit to you that's a big thing uh that's part of actually where the custom rifle stuff came from is training some people um you know i had a guy he's six i guess he's about six four and his rifle was set up for somebody who would have been you know five eight five nine <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and you just watch people fight with their gear so i like to spend a good amount of time on not just setting up their gun for them but understanding why and how to set up the gun for them um yeah. and then the second day the first day is man it's four or five hours really we d devote to classroom time and, and just understanding uh ballistics things like that and then i like to spend that second day out on the range um and we cover everything you know from uh everything from you know i've had guys interested in reloading i've trained you know i've taught some of those classes too um mm -hmm. which that opens up the door to you know, longer shots too, and building confidence and stuff with better ammunition. Uh, but yeah, it's 750 a day. Uh, I try to do two days with new guys. Um, guys who've been around a little bit, understand their gear and stuff like that. We can get what we need to cover and get a pretty good education basis in a day. Uh, okay. Well, and that's, and so that's, and, and I, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot on, on prices or anything, but uh, the, the thing that, and, and I, the reason I, bring this up is because i'm very guilty of it um i especially getting into this i spent thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on because you know we all want to have the newest scope and the newest stock and you know the new hot cartridge and you know all this other stuff but because it's fun and it's cool and but at the end of the day if you can't use it you know, it, it, buying buying that equipment doesn't automatically make you a better shooter. And so, trying to put it in perspective, you know, it's like for a PRS or, or an NRL hunter match. You know, if you spend three hundred bucks on the match, and you know, a couple hundred bucks in ammo, and a few hundred bucks on a hotel, and a couple hundred bucks in gas and food, you know, you can go get a weekend of training for the cost of a match. And and don't get me wrong, like I love. I love shooting matches and I love the NRL hunter matches, but um, you can gain so much and save yourself so much freaking headache um, of, you know, sucking ass at a match and being frustrated, you know what I mean? Or God forbid, you know, you're out on a hunt and, and you ruin a hunt because you miss a, you miss a shot on, yeah. Uh, you know, animal of a lifetime or something like that. And so and my big deal, I'm glad you said that. My big deal is like, I'd rather see someone miss a, miss a shot than hit an animal bad. Yes. So yeah, that's, that's the bigger concern with me is guys that, uh, and you know, it is what it is. These guys that read everything on the internet and think they know how to do, you know, do these things and they go out and they try to shoot a, I don't know, a white tail or an elk or something at, you know, 410 yards and they either break a bad trigger or, you know, they don't account for the 12 mile an hour full value wind and whatever they're shooting, whatever the case is, you hit an animal bad. That's a completely different discussion. A clean yeah. miss, be thankful it's a clean miss. You hit an animal bad, it, uh, it's not a fun time. I, yeah. I well, and especially, to, you know, some of the, you know, some of these hunts, you know, you're spending a, a, a you know, either a, a decent chunk of change to a lot of money to go to go do this and if you wound an animal you're paying it one way or the other oh, yeah. and you know and you know out ethically also you know we want to make a, a one clean shot but you know even from a financial standpoint you know you've got all this time and money invested in gear and the hunt mm -hmm. you know well, holy shit let's make it worth it yeah i mean i've got my local range here i'm a mile and a half you've been here i mean you know how close it is to me 
yeah, I'm, I'm super jealous. Time, yeah. <laughs> I'm up there all the time and, you know, I'll see a guy lay down with, I mean, he open up his bag, lay out all the stuff. He's got no shortage of, you know, a, a nice used truck sitting there and, and money. Yeah. And, and he's all over the place at a 360 yard Ipsic, you know, and I don't mean on the Ipsic, I mean, below the Ipsic, above the Ipsic, left of the Ipsic, right? I mean, things like that. And it kind of drives me nuts because it's like, you've spent a whole lot of money and you're experiencing a lot of frustration and a lot of disappointment. And we can work that out pretty quick. You know, we, yeah. can, we, we can get you making hits pretty quick. Yeah. Well, and, and something I, I think is it, realistically shooting, you know, making a good shot at three to 400 yards is not that difficult if you have a good understanding of, of what you're doing and, you know, so I, I've spent a lot of time with you. I've shot with you a bunch and and then, and then training with you, having someone like yourself that knows everything and has lived it on, you know, multiple different, you know, uh, ways of getting it done uh it's it's worth its weight in gold to be able to come out and get a crash course of everything you need to know even if you don't retain everything off of the first go which you probably won't um yeah. but yeah but being but but at least being presented with all of the information that you need to have and not having to rely on Facebook or the internet or all the other dickheads that think that their way is the best or that, you know, you have to do this this way and shoot this cartridge and all that stuff. It, I mean, it can save you, I mean, realistically years of, of troubleshooting stuff. Yeah. Well, and that's, so you bring up a good point as far as like drink, uh, I mentioned drinking from a fire hose. That's also a primary reason that I don't train groups of people. You want to come train with me? It's going to be one-on-one. -on -one father, son, a family, stuff like that, a couple, you know, two or three buddies, I'm going to cap it there because yeah. number one, we don't know what we don't know. And everybody learns at a different pace. Yeah. Okay? I'm not knocking the group classes out there. I've been to some group trainings and I'll get little tidbits here and there. Um, but the reality is, is if you can spend hands on time with somebody and train one or two people in two days, you have enough time to make sure that they get the most information possible. And that's a yeah. big thing with some of these group trainings is there's going to be 20% of the class that excels because you're all starting off at a different, a different level too. Yeah. Know, let's just face it. You are, whether you all have shot together your entire life, there's going to be certain things that certain people understand out of the gate or a lot faster than someone else. And uh, that's another thing, you know, it's expensive. It's 750 bucks a day. It's not a little bit of money, right? Right. You should get the most out of it possible. And that's yeah. why I'm talking about, you know, on, on how many people are trained at one time, because I don't want anybody falling behind. Yeah. Well, and, and the main reason that honestly, the main reason I'm harping on it is because I, I, I did that. I, you know, I, I bought the equipment and I was like, I'm going to go shoot as much as I can. And, you know, shit, dude, my first PRS match, I got absolutely skull drug. I, I think I came in like second or third to last. and you know, the next one I was like 80th and the next one I was 60th and, you know, and, and it's, I mean, this is, this, this is my fourth year shooting and I finally feel like I'm actually, you know, fairly proficient. Um, if I can keep my head in it. Um, but that was one thing. So, um, and I, I know you kind of touched on this, I, you, you can you can train competition shooters, but that's not really your uh, primary thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I'll train some competition guys here and there if that's what they need. But that type of training is a little bit different. You and I have discussed that. You know, I was told a long time ago that because I've looked at shooting in PRS since 2016. Um, truth be told, I built a PRS gun every year from 2016 to 2020. Um, every year I built one and honestly didn't know anybody that shot it. And I'll be honest, I didn't have the balls to just go jump in. I didn't <laughs> sell, I'd sell it every year. I'd build a gun, I'd shoot it here, you know, get it all dialed in where I was happy with it. And then I just, man, I'm not going to do it. I'll just wait till next year. I'll just wait till next year. 
And that's another thing I tell people that new guys, man, when, I'm thinking about doing that. Just go do it. Don't do what yeah. I did. Don't, don't go do what I did. Cause I will tell you the competition level from 2016 till now. Holy shit. <laughs> drastically different. Like drastically even, for, even from when I started uh, and I started in 2020. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dude, it's, it, so and that's, it is kind of so I made the mistake of never getting training from anybody. You made the mistake of not st- starting. Um, yeah. I, I will say, and, and dude, I talk to so many people like that. They're like, "Well, I kind of want to do it, but, but yeah, I did go go shoot a match, and at, at the at a minimum, go shoot a, a regional match. Um, what if it's PRS? Go, you don't even have to go shoot it." Go watch and hang out. You'll learn a ton just by watching. Yeah. If, you're not, if you don't have all the gear set up already, if you go to a PRS regional match, you go to one of these NRL Hunter matches, um, or you just find your local range where you find some guys that compete or at, reach out to them. Go out, test all their gear. We'll all let you shoot our stuff. Yep. How the last match, uh, granted, you know why I went. I went to <laughs> you know, work with you and also just to – the PRS is have a good time for me now. It just is. I just go to yeah. have a good time. I don't care how I shoot. Well, hell, I shot day one. Um, and another good friend of mine had a scope issue. And I, here, take my scope. And his reply yeah. to me, oh, you're shooting a match. No, I'm screwing off. Take my scope. You're trying to be competitive. Yeah. So that's just how we are. We are. I yeah. Mean, come, and, uh, and for those that don't know, and I'm not going to get into the details of it, but like that, that is one of the things I absolutely love about the PRS and, and uh, and the shooting thing, like so Dan 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 was registered for the match, shot day one, had a good friend of his have a scope issue, and he literally pulled the scope off of his competition rifle and gave it to him so he could finish out the match. I mean, it's it is such a, a strong community and 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 there's and there's plenty of other people just like Dan that if you, I mean if you want to borrow a rifle, I mean a lot of guys, you know, you may have to bring ammo or something, but like or you can borrow a bag or a tripod or try out these binoculars or spotting scope or whatever. Um, people are here to help. And so that's why I say just go go do it. It's it's pretty amazing, the community that we have. Yeah. NRL Hunter is a lot that way too. Um, and because I I and we'll we'll touch on this topic. I know this is probably gonna come up, but I have a, a decent little stock of rifles. This is a client gun behind me, but um, I think I have six or seven rifles that would fit in one of the classes at NRL Hunter. Yeah. I've, I've told friends of mine, you want to go learn how to shoot and be efficient? Come shoot one of these. You ain't got to spy ammo or nothing. Just come grab a, grab a gun. I'll make sure it's running. Let's go have a good time. And the reality is this, like, even I'm not, I'm not shooting PRS competitively anymore, at least not now. Um, if you had someone, you know, that you knew I was just going to go to a match and hang out and you had someone that wanted to get in but didn't have a gun, hey, shoot mine. I'll load the ammo for it. Go have fun. Yeah. You know? I, yeah, it's it's cool. It's just, anyway, yeah, I, I don't mean to go too far into that, but yeah, it's, it's cool. Um, and so, I, you know, one of the things – so getting getting a train with you. So that was my first time having formal training, mm-hmm. and um, thankfully, you know. So Dan has shot with me a bunch of times, and uh, I I think my my fundamentals and like my you know being able to build a position and stuff like that's pretty decent. But um, my my big issue was was keeping my head in it and how to think about things and. Um, how to process information and man, it, it, it helped, it helped me so much. And, um, so we, we went to the, um, loophole match in, in Navasota and I finished 20th at that match. And honestly, I felt like I shoot my ass off and I had, one stage that I kind of got wind dicked on, but it kind of got everybody. Um, and outside of that, like, I feel like I shot really well. And then um, I went to Justin's match a few weeks ago and dude, and it was, it was clicking. I was so, 
and it's and this is more just to brag on on you, but um, I was down four shots through the first five stages, and then my trigger went down, and I fucked with that for <laughs> way too long. And I dropped 30 shots in the next five stages, got it all fixed after day one, and then came back and I dropped four shots all of day two. Um, and man, I haven't, I, I feel like I've been doing better, but I haven't been able to put back to back to back to back stages together like that yeah. ever. And so it, it was a, it was a really big confidence builder and, and it was just, uh, honestly, it was just, it was the pregame process of, you know, how, okay, how are we going to think about this? What are we looking for? Um, and, and processing things and, and, um, from someone that, you know, my business is, is in this type of stuff and spends a lot of money to go travel around at these matches, dude, it, it, it was invaluable and I super appreciated it. Mm -hmm. Um, how do we got, uh, to make the time to do it? It was, yeah. And like you mentioned it, your biggest thing was processing and take the time to process. Um, and a lot of that is, and that's all I was getting at earlier. Competition game, once you get the fundamentals down, which your fundamentals are fine. It's when they say it's a mental game, it is, but it's understanding that it's understanding what that means, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds, but talking about right. subconscious conscious mind and all that stuff, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff that goes into that. But your big thing was processing, and I think we got a handle on that. Um, and yeah, man, at, at best in Texas or uh, the Louisville match, that is the best in Texas, isn't it? Uh, really yeah, yeah, that's the best in Texas match. Yeah, I mean, you you did, and, and the one stage you're talking about, I still remember that damn stage. Um, it got everyone. I mean, <laughs> I I still don't know. I shot every wind I could think of, and we didn't hold. There was no right side wind. I didn't have right wind in the gun or hold right wind the entire match and i think i got two impacts on that stage a two and i hit it straight up and i ended holding like two or three tenths right to hit it again yeah it made no logical sense but that's the way it went for everybody on that particular stage at that given time yeah and, and it that so it was a it was a two minute it was a two minute target it was a circle and i it, it was just it was a fishy tailwind and I sent shots that covered everything from uh, 0.2 to 1.1 mils. Yeah. And it was just left, right, left, right, left, right. You know, I, th I think I actually hit it with, I was holding three tenths on one, and I think I was holding eight tenths on the other one that hit. Yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, there's not much you can do about that. No, you, and I mean, it, it is. Get the bullet in the air as fast as you can, maintain your fundamentals, and just correct off what you see. I mean, they always say the bullet doesn't lie, but you know what? The wind does change. Yeah. And especially headwinds and tailwinds. Some of that stuff you can't see. And a lot of it, depending on where you're shooting from and where the target is, you can't feel it either. So, right. but I mean, we all, we've all experienced some of that in matches. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. part of the fun of it, honestly, is dealing with the adversity of stages like that. Yeah. But, um, so I do want to get into a little bit. So, uh, so Dan and, and I don't remember who all is going with you but getting ready to go to africa for a pretty badass hunt can you can you tell us what's going on with that yeah so i've got uh, a couple clients um it's an interesting deal how this all worked out i booked this trip two years ago for my 40th birthday and it was me and my wife going and i told the outfitter who's a friend of mine i said look i'm gonna try to get some more people to go with me we'll just see how it shakes out and uh ended up starting up this business have two clients their wives me and my wife and the first leg of the trip is going to be kind of in central south africa it's still northern cape but it's outside of kimberly and then the second part of the trip we have some other folks going with us um and we're going to be ending up uh limpopo valley up there on the border northern border of south africa and yeah man i'm i'm jazzed um uh, i know i've got ammo coming from you which i'm excited about I'm excited to yep. shoot that stuff. And I've got two brand spanking new rifles that have been broken in and low development. And um, neither one of them have taken an animal. That'll change here in about three weeks. So yeah, I'm, I'm jazzed for that trip, man, to get to go back. We were there in 22, had the absolute time of our life and looking forward to going back and taking a little time off. 
Yeah, dude, I'm I'm so I'm so stoked for you. It's uh, I saw the videos from the last one, and between you and and the people that are going, it's a pretty remarkable list of of shit y'all are y'all are going after. Uh, mainly, mainly on them. <laughs> <laughs> mainly yeah. on them. But yeah, yeah I've so, got two animals that I'm going after. Um, one's kind of a bucket list animal. Um, I have a crystal clear understanding that it may not happen and I'm okay with, you know, not taking. And which one is that? So I'm, I'm on the hunt. I'm, I'm trying to, to shoot a kudu that, that goes in. I would like to shoot a kudu that goes in the mid to high sixties. Um, I mean, it's a unicorn. Yeah. So I don't know I'm going to have to put a, a lot of miles on the, on the boots every day and it just is what it is, but it's good. Yeah. I, I hope it happens. And I, I'm stoked. I'm stoked that you're taking taking my out so we're, we're loading uh 25 65 prc ammo uh, with the 133 burgers and uh seven song uh with the 180 hybrids right a little trusty yeah. 180s yeah yeah so i'm i'm freaking stoked uh uh this will be the the first batch of animals in africa that for my ammo so i'm pretty freaking stoked for that yeah. Well, there's going to be uh, so the 25 is going to be shot by pretty much everybody that's going, um, just because it's uh, the ladies can shoot it. It's not going to beat them around too much. The seven psalm, I, that's going to be mine. I'm not probably going to yeah. pass around too much. <laughs> that's that's going to shoot. But yeah, I'm I'm stoked for that trip. Um, honestly, I'm I'm actually stressed about it because I just got a mountain i've got to cram five pounds of shit in a one pound bag in the next couple of weeks and yeah you know, we're but <laughs> yeah and then three weeks of uh three weeks of very little cell phone i mean we have no cell coverage there other than when we're on wi-fi and that's maybe every evening um in one camp the other camp i don't know that we have wi-fi at all so yeah that's not it'd be camp. so nice to just yeah you know but, yeah oh my god I mean, yeah, it's gonna be super nice. Yeah, uh, and and just so y'all know, so uh, Dan and I are planning a uh, follow up episode after they get back from Africa, um, and go over like you know go over the trip, go over the hunt, but we're gonna have uh, pictures and videos and stuff like that of the hunt. And uh, if if you don't know, so we have the audio podcast on like spotify and itunes but we also do the video on youtube and for this one we're going uh we're going to do a lot um we're gonna we'll we'll play some some videos and uh you know actually get to watch the hunt happen so i'm pretty freaking stoked to get all that and it's going to take me a minute to get everything edited put together but it, it should be pretty cool yeah i plan to have I'll probably have somewhere between three and four terabytes. Of video. <laughs> well, we've got multiple phones. Um, you know, my stuff will be set up on a spotting scope. Uh, I've also got a professional videographer. Um, you know, we'll have drones running and all that stuff. So it's, it's, it's going to be a pretty cool trip. And I've, I've used them before we used them on the last trip. And I still have not gone through all the video footage that we have from the last trip. Yeah. Well, and that the the movie that your guy put together was just, dude, it was like, I mean, it was, I mean, it was like a professional movie. I mean, it was like cinematic. It was, it was badass. Yeah, he did um, a great job, man. Brandon's, uh, Brandon's a rock star when it comes to that stuff, man. And I get to benefit too because he's also a PH, so I get to pay a guy to be a videographer, but he also sits in the back with us and you know gets to do a little PH work too with us, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so. I want to I want to dig into a little bit more. Okay, so you know a little bit into like you know what you're doing, training, and you know mindset a little bit. But um, the easiest thing I can correlate this to is to enter a hunter. Um, you know, with is you know seeing, um, you know what what the competition series makes you do and what it requires, and some of the mindset of some of the stuff I've seen. Um, so. I, I sent you I sent you this text this morning, but I saw a post talking about how 
NRL Hunter is supposed to be this hunting based scenario and people game it. And uh, that gamers should be penalized and blah, 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 blah. Which, frankly, kind of pissed me off. But um, so I want to, I, honestly, I want to spend some time at, like addressing this because I, I think, um, kind of like we said, people are so tied into of what hunting is quote unquote supposed to be and how it's supposed to look and and all that but in the reality of it is if you can make a proficient shot on an animal and kill that animal that's a successful hunt yeah regardless of how you do it and so um i want to dig into like into that i guess thought process of what people think is gaming but what I actually look at as being incredibly proficient with your equipment. And, and yeah. so like it just, and, and sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but so like Dan is, is, is you know, like I said, an incredible competitor and an, and a very accomplished hunter. And then if you, and you know, you also look at guys like John Pinch and Matt Alwan who are, you know, honestly kicking everybody's ass in our hunter to whatever match they show up to. But in, in, and and I'm not as familiar with Alwine's hunting, uh, what all he's done. But John Pinch is, I mean, dude, oh, holy shit, that guy's killed shit all across the world, and yeah. and and it, it wasn't hundred yard shots, you know, like he wasn't waiting for something to walk out. So I think there's there's a lot to say about being able to find something range it and engage it regardless of what the scenario is and and so kind of take me through like how you how you think about that um you know the gaming versus you know being proficient and, and like what kind of equipment you take into the field hunting that maybe people don't necessarily think about or um how you can be more successful with without just you know and it's not just an old 30 out six kind of thing yeah so well i'll i'll actually plug this gun back here for example um so this is this is actually a hunting rifle this is not a cop rifle um mm -hmm. that gun as it sits weighs like 8.3 pounds with the optic on okay uh, that is that is built for a guy who's going to be hunting in tennessee um the tripod it sits on that's what's going to africa with me i will take a tripod I will take a tag plate. I will take a bag. I'll take a rifle with a bipod. I'll take my Kestrel. I'll run my EL ranges. And what I'm listing off of everything I'm taking with me is the same shit that I take to an NRO hunter match. It is yeah. literally the only difference is I run a two section tripod in NRO hunter and I'm taking this to Africa for no other reason than the two leg version doesn't fit the damn check bag. That's the reason why I can't take it. It doesn't fit in the damn check bag. So I've got to yeah. take a, 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 a What tripod is that? Uh, really right stuff, TFCT 34L. Okay. So. Um, and you use the 22i and then I'm Yes, I used, uh, yeah, that inverted, the inverted to okay. 22. Um, I'll have the compact scene. Um, and then I do have, now, I know there's going to be image of it that come out. I'm very, very small. People don't beat my door down when they come out, but I do have a tag plate coming. Um, I was actually on a phone call before I jumped on this, uh, trying to hash out some of the details on the prototype that's going to Africa with me. Um, give me a chance to put it through its paces before I finalize it and make a run of them. But uh, yeah, man, I take the same stuff to an NRO hunter match that I hunt with. I mean, 100%. And, and the main reason why is, is efficiency. So I don't have anything against triple bulls. I actually think they're really cool. I am more comfortable and more proficient shooting off a tack plate in a bag off one of these things. I just, yeah. I just think. Uh, I see the value in a triple pull. Um, I also don't like that much bipod on the front of my gun because of weight. I know yours balanced is better with it, but we run kind of different setups. Um, yeah, well, and like I got mine for NRL 100 and like I'll take it. I, it's one of those things like it is, a, it, dude, it's a lot. 
Like it's a badass bipod. Oh yeah. But it's a lot. It's one of those things like I'll probably like when I actually when I go hunt, I'll it'll be I'll throw it in the backpack. And if I need it, I'll have it. Yeah. But I'll probably throw, you know, a much, you know, a Harris or something like that on it for hiking around kind of thing. Yeah. But yeah. Well, and the thought process is to get back to your question, the thought process with all this is a simple. If you're doing any type of hunting outside of sitting in a box blind, which I'll be honest with you, if you want to make a stupid stable shot out of the box blind, bag in the window, tripod rear, it's insanely stable. Uh, I've done it. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah I, I have too. I shot my last. Well, yeah, I think my last coyote was shot out of a box blind. We were just up there. I don't shoot whitetails anymore. Um, at least not out of blinds. I don't. We mainly just go front of my property. We're watching the deer herd grow. There's, he's got some big boys out there that are popping up. It's nice to see, but honestly, we sit up there and wait for the sun to go down and shoot pigs and shoot coyotes. Um, but the deal with like gun with a bipod, there's actually a lot of old school guys that don't even believe in a bipod, but let's say the old Harris, you know, that attaches with the sling stud. How many guys do you think actually take animals prone every single shot? It doesn't happen. Right just doesn't happen um that's why a tripod is so so valuable you can set it up in inclines declines um just odd areas with adjustable legs and the whole idea is to be extremely stable when you break a shot because if you're going to make the decision to take the life of an animal and be ethical about it you need to be breaking a stable perfect shot Yep. You don't know, be settling for wobble and just shooting off crappy stuff. You just don't need to do that. Tripod bypasses a lot of that stuff. Um, tack plate in a bag. I don't like tripping into uh, clipping into a tripod. That's just, I'm far more efficient and more comfortable shooting tack, pl tack plate and bag. Uh, that's a personal preference. Yeah. But back to your statement about the whole gaming thing, like what is, what is gaming? Gaming to me, an NRL hunter is shooting the stage outside of the way you're told to shoot it. Like if there's a marked area on a rock, and yeah, you can't build a prone position. Figure it out. But instead, you like go four feet to the right and shoot your targets. That's gaming the stage. I gear, agree. I don't believe you can game in a raw hunter with gear. I just don't believe you can. I don't. I don't subscribe to that. Now, there's going to be guys that don't have a tripod. Well, that's why you get out and watch a match. If you don't want, if look, if you don't want to spend, and these things aren't cheap. They're not right. Um, there's there's more affordable options, but but yeah, no yeah. gear gets Even the affordable ones. It's I mean five six hundred bucks to get into right. like Leo photos, like five or six hundred bucks with a you know a head or a ball head or something like that. If you don't want to go burn the money, go drive up. You know, take your kid on a weekend, go watch a match together. Take you and your wife. I mean, some of these locations we shoot are actually beautiful. The first match we shot in Oklahoma was gorgeous. Oh, that place was amazing. Yeah, it was uh, awesome. Jim C put on a. Uh, yeah. Awesome, awesome match. Yeah, that was uh, the Sooner State Safari. Um, I'll try to hit that match every single year. Um, I like Jim's matches. Uh, he does some stuff that makes you think. Um, and especially that venue was gorgeous. But, like, take your wife up there for a weekend. There's, We actually found a killer steak place, but there's great places to eat at most of these places. <laughs> yeah. Rent an Airbnb and make a weekend out of it, but then go out and watch a couple hours of shooting. It's a good excuse to get out, you know, stay unplugged from your phone. And see how some of this stuff is done with this gear. Um, because I'm not saying you got to spend a bunch of money to be competitive. But what I'm saying is, is you better be prepared to make a perfect shot if you're going to take, you know, the life of an animal. Yes. If, that's just my stance on it. Um, I 1000% I, I agree. But yeah, I, I, you actually, you actually, that was, uh, you sent me that text and I was dealing with some crap at work today it actually made me laugh a little bit because <laughs> I see some of that. I don't do a whole, like, I don't remember where that came from. Like Facebook's a place I don't spend any time on. Um, there's so much negativity out there on Facebook for the most part. I'll peruse around and, and browse here and there. Yeah. You're not missing anything. Yeah. Um, but I see that a lot. I see, I see the negativity side and it's like, guys, the gun world is so incredibly small and you've probably found this out just from your business too. Even internationally, it's so small. We all know a lot of the same people. Yep. Whether you agree with what we're using for gear or not, 
try to be proficient with what you have if you don't want to use that that's fine too but i don't think you need to be barking about changing you know rules and i i read it about you know judges on how you shoot the stage honestly what that's going to do is drive people away from shooting the sport that's what it's going to do i agree well and and so like and and not to go off, off topic we'll, we'll come back but like so my deal is you know at the end of the day the NL hunter is a, is a competition series it's not it's not a it's not a guided hunt it's not a hunting training business it, it is a competition series and you know uh so like i i now i granted the rifle i built for NRL hunter is now my new hunting rifle but you know i've got 10 grand wrapped up in a in a rifle and then you know a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks to travel to the match um if i show up and i used my gear in a way that someone wasn't expecting and got disqualified from that match or from that stage dude, I, 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 I would not be i would not be happy about it to to yeah. put it yeah. lightly you know it, it, if if the if the name of the game is hitting the target and i use the gear that i brought with me to be efficient and hit that target and you didn't like it. Absolutely not. And, you know, so when, and, and at the end of the day, like, I mean, for, for 99.9% .9 of the people, this is a hobby. And if, if we're going to spend this much money to come and try and compete at a high level, there needs to be very specific rules of that lines out this person you know, this person hit this amount of targets, so he beat this person that hit one less, and so on and so forth. Well, here's uh, my other thought on, on that, though, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but NRL Hunter has a skills division where you don't pay as much. Yeah, you're not eligible for points in the price table and all that jazz. But if you just want to get out and shoot to have fun, and you disagree, let's say you disagree with the gear that everybody else uses, the gear I use. Shoot yeah. Skill. At the yeah. end of the day, it's going to make you a more efficient hunter, period. Whether yes. your skills are competing, getting out, yeah. using your gear, and trying to hit targets, because it, and we've talked about this before, how well NRL hunter correlates to a hunting scenario. It is the yeah. closest thing you can do aside from, you know, someone standing out there and letting an animal go. You know I mean? Right. right? And Dude, it, you you hit that on the head, man. It, it's it, it. Sorry. Anyway, continue. Continue. I'll, I'll put my boss. No, just, I mean, I'm not trying to get on a soapbox about it, but it 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 made me laugh. But then it also kind of fired me up a little bit because it's like, man, there's some of us that want to compete. I enjoy competing in NRL hunter, but the real reason I do it is just because it's fun. Yeah. yeah. I treat all the shooting sports now as, as a legitimate hobby because it's fun. It gives me a chance to cut loose from what I do every day for a living, um, which is pretty, pretty darn stressful. And I get to hang out with all my buddies and, and shoot my gun. You know, I'll never forget this. And this is something that, you know, all shooters need to remember. Uh, I actually got this from Phil Vallejo. Um, it was my very first finale. I had been shooting like five or six months, man. I, I, I was down a little bit on myself. I have very high expectations of myself whenever I do anything. And I think I was sitting 21st after day one and he's, he laughed. He's like, you're sitting higher than I am. And he goes, uh, he made the comment to me. He goes, just remember you're paying a lot of money and travel and expenses and all this stuff. He said, you're shooting 20 stages at two minutes. You're paying a lot of money to be able to shoot your gun at targets for 40 minutes over a weekend. And I stopped and thought about that. And I think about that all the time. Um, cause I don't get angry on stages or pissed off anymore. I laugh at myself if I do something stupid, just yeah. because I, you know, I try to stay lighthearted and make sure everyone has a good time. And I, I have a good time, but that's the reality of this posts like that or messages that go out. It's like, dude, we spend thousands of dollars for this hobby to go shoot our gun for 20, 30, 40 minutes for a weekend and go hang out with our buddies. Like it's, it's not that serious. It's, it's yeah. just not, uh, yeah. but it, but adversely, if they do do something like that, there's going to be a lot of us that are like, I'm out. I'm, I'm yeah. not. I'll tell you what, if they did that, I'm not going to shoot at me. And this isn't something that's like being considered. This was right. Someone it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, people, people bitching on social media. But 
Yeah, but yeah, yeah, no, I I totally agree. And and the thing, um, but the so, I I agree with you. So Emerald Hunter, I I think it one I I would encourage people like if you just shoot PRS, come shoot NRL Hunter because it's it 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 uh, applies a lot of different skill sets that you don't um uh, need for prs um and vice versa prs requires a lot of things that you don't need in a hunter but it, it it makes you such such a more well-rounded shooter and honestly that's why i have a lot of respect for for your success because you're you've been very successful in prs and like i think a prs is just it's just it is precision like you 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 have to be perfect and nrl um the targets aren't as small, but it requires so many other things that, and, and you've been very successful in that. And, um, but it, NRL Hunter, I mean, it, it is, I mean, yes, there's some competition dynamics to it where it, it, you're not, you know, never, I've never walked up, shot a deer, moved position, and shot the same deer again, kind of thing, you know, like, but, but in the, the grand concept of, running up to a completely blind stage you don't know where the target is find range and engage and build and build that position to to hit that target i mean dude it's freaking awesome yeah and it's under stress with a time limit um yep. the biggest thing i'll say about nrl hunter though that would help prs shooters and you know this at prs matches we all sit there and talk about what wind we're shooting blah 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 right yeah. It is literally you by yourself, find it, range it, dope it, engage it. But the other thing we don't talk about is you better pay attention to what the hell the wind's doing. Because you, so yep. PRS, I would say an advantage to PRS is, especially if you can position yourself correctly, is being behind someone shooting a stage. And if yep. you take the time to know the target with and you watch your bullet fly, you can get your wind call off watching what the bullet does. You don't get to see yep. any damn bullet. NRL Hunter. Yep. You don't even get to see the person shoot the stage. You don't know if you're shooting, you know, way over here to the left or to the right. The only thing, I mean, you can hear, but that's about it, which I'm giving away a little tidbit there. You can hear <laughs> your ears. Um, but the reality is, is that will help you in some PRS matches. I mean, there's some matches that are more geared towards perfection, like what you said. Um, right. Right. The cell just smaller targets, lower wind. Um, that's not going to help you as much there. But if you shoot Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, um, yep. you're going to feel some wind. And not relying on hearing other someone else's wind call and not relying on what you're seeing out of a gun to go up there and make your hits. Yeah, absolutely. It'll it'll bottom line, it'll make you a better PRS shooter. But the reality is, is it'll make you a better shooter, period. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, and honestly, man, and, it, and not to get into PRS versus NRL because they're, they're, they're totally different, but um, man, it, I, this has been one of the funnest years of shooting I've ever had. Um, you know, going, going to a PRS match where it's, where it's just ungodly competitive and you have to strive for perfection of seeing you know every single bullet and making it you know and, and and all this stuff and then all the way to nrl where it's totally blind you got to figure everything out on the fly and and you have to be able to make a win call on the fly and range on you know range on under a time constraint and build positions and um uh, and that's one thing build building building positions in nrl versus prs is a totally different ball game yeah, it is you know, uh, and and that's because in NRL there's so much more leeway um, and random shit that you got to deal with, whether it's just tall grass or yeah. trees or hay bales or you know whatever the case is. Um, it, well, it's it, not all defined, right? It's in in PRS you have defined. You know, you shoot it off these three rocks and then this tire and then this contraption, whatever it is, it's defined. Right. An NRL hunter, there's a marker. It's either, you know, something spray painted or, and you have to be within 
basically you have to be within touching distance of it. Either you can reach over and touch it with your foot or reach over and touch it with your arm or whatever. Yeah. So it allows you, and that's, look, here's the reality with shooting as a whole. The best shooters are extremely good critical thinkers. It, you mentioned it, like yes. if you see somebody that uses their gear in a manner that you didn't think of. Yes, precision shooting, no matter which sport, rewards those that critically think through things better than others. It's just the nature of the beast. And NRL Hunter will really test your critical thinking because yeah. I've had a couple matches where, you know, I range it, run up there, and I build a position, I get behind my gun, and I'm like, I mean, perfect example is the, the tire stage day two um at Brantley's match. Um, I think it's the Manners Elite Hunter. And do you remember the two? I believe it was two either wolf targets or coyote targets we engaged. I think it was our second to last stage we shot for the match. And I shot it with a bipod. And I'll be honest, I think I told you this. I got down and went, oh shit. All I see is grass, but the wind would blow the grass. I'd see the target, grass would stand up. See the target. And I'm like, oh right. yeah. Yeah. I, I sent it target was big enough and I still got to see everything, but it's stuff like that. Like the yep. tire was there. You just had to be within the vicinity of the Mark shooting position. I could, I was, my shoulder was literally touching the Mark shooting position. Yeah. But and, I, and I shot it off a tripod. Yeah. You shot it off a tripod. Um, someone else shot it off the tire, but it yeah. allowed you to critically think through that. Like I had to change my bipod height to clear the grass so I could actually get around on target. But yeah. it's because it, in shooting, we obviously want to build the most stable position possible. And the most stable position possible is usually prone or modified prone because of multiple points of contact. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you approached it different than I approached it. We all ended up, um, I think the majority of us that shot it, for the most part, we all cleaned it. But it was interesting after I shot it to watch. Let's see, I think you went and shot it. And then I think... Uh, I think Peyton and I think Vince all shot it after me. I think I shot first. Yeah. On that round. And that's another thing we'll get to. That's differences too in PRS and NRL is PRS is very high stress all the time. You're in an order. You shoot within a squad. You're in that order. NRL hunter, you don't have to technically stay in your squad. You can shoot whatever order you want. If you want to, you need to go hit the bathroom or just, you know, let's say you had a bad stage. You need to clear your head. You're not next up on the next stage. There is no next up on the next stage. Yeah. You want to water, go grab a, cold water you know chill out for a minute it's an, dude, it's very, dude, it's very low key. yeah I, dude, honestly that's a that was a hard thing for me to grasp the first match like i can't <laughs> no. dude, i can't tell you how many and not to get like too deep in, like too much information but like i can't say how many prs matches i've like held having to take a shit for three hours because yeah. it's just you know it, go 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 and i'm, I'm like okay well i I'm going to go over here and then I got to watch them. Then I got to prep and then I got to shoot. Well, and then shit, it, it repeats all over. In NRL Hunter, you ain't got shit to do until it's your turn. Like, cause you can't, yeah. you can't watch targets. You can't, you can't watch the people that are going. You can't figure out how to, how you're going to yeah, shoot. That's with your buddies, man. That's so that's <laughs> the nice, that's the low stress part of it. If you want to go have a fun weekend with your buddies and you shoot a lot of PRS, go shoot an NRL Hunter match because it's just like, Literally, it's a bunch of people just hanging out, shooting the shit. It's like, I'll go. You know, yeah. there is no order. But see, I also see the place of PRS, and I like PRS so much because it forces you into a certain mindset for an entire weekend. I'll I'll never forget this. So the first match when I had, um, I walked up to Tate Streeter. Um, and I love Tate, man. Tate's awesome. And Dude, he goes, best of the best. He goes, how do you feel? And I turned to him and the answer that most people would expect, like, dude, I'm overwhelmed. I'm excited. I'm this. No, hell no. I'm mentally exhausted. Like it took every ounce of my brain power. Oh, and this I, is after the K&M match you won, right? Uh, that was a grind. Cap grind 22. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the funny thing is too, and a lot of people, I've never really asked many people this question, but when you win a match, this will tell you how competitive you really are. When you win a match, or even when you finish in the top five or top 10, you pick yourself apart. It's no matter if you finish first, fifth, 10th, no matter where you are, it's the same feeling at the end of the match. You felt like you left a lot on the table. Yep. And 
I experienced that too, but man, I'm telling you mental, but I, I like the mental exhaustion because a lot goes into, a lot goes into shooting the match, no matter where you place a lot goes into it. Yep. But it's, I know for you, you shoot a lot for me. I shoot a lot, but a lot of these guys that don't shoot a lot during the week and get to go out and enjoy those matches. It's a nice change of pace just to, just to get out and shoot. And I think, Oh yeah. No matter what discipline you want to shoot, hell, go shoot both. Go shoot a lot of both. They're a blast. The people are awesome. And the whole reason I got into this game, because I started playing with long range shooting, and I think my first, I call it a custom gun. It was completely true to Remington, new bolt. Um, I think it was a, I forget what barrel was in it, was on it, uh, what we ended up chambering for that thing, and abetted manners. And that was like 2006 or 2008. So that's how long I've been playing with these damn things. Um, but if you're and the whole reason I did it was hunting. It was, it was hunting. Like I yeah. love shooting bodies. Um, at that time, I, you know, I love just, I just love getting out hunting period. Yep. And then I found the rabbit hole that is the internet and precision shooting and, and custom guns and all that stuff. And that's been, you know, that was a long time ago, but it's been quite the rabbit hole to go down. But uh, at the end of the day, the whole reason I've done all this stuff is to be a more efficient and more effective hunter. That's, yeah. That's what... Now I'm to the point in shooting where, like on this trip, I'll be honest, I'm looking forward to watching and helping everyone else hunt. There will be a lot of animals taken on this trip. And a very, very small portion of those will be me. Yeah. Um, I may shoot one or two. I mean, I, I will go on every hunt, but I may actually break the trigger once or twice at an animal. That's it. Yeah. I find so much more enjoyment in other people's success. And that's part of the reason why I went to the training side of things. Like I had more fun on day two shooting and, and helping you than I did on day one because I, and it's not that I wasn't shooting is that I could actually sit there and watch what you were doing and watch you put certain things we were working on in place and watching you be successful with those things being, being, being practiced. Um, and that's, you know, like I was in Italy with, with Peyton Grimes and got to see her success there. And that was. Which, and not to interrupt you for, for those of you, for those of you that don't know. So Peyton Grimes is an incredibly, incredibly accomplished female shooter, um, a, a young female shooter. And she, she is um she won the world championship uh center fire for ladies in uh 2022 and she won uh world championship and rim fire for ladies in 2023 as well and um dan was uh, and and i'm not taking anything peyton peyton is an unbelievably good shooter and she shot her match but you know dan was there you know helping uh you know watch things and, and coach her and some things like that um she don't need a lot of help man she just peyton's more of a she's got her system down mainly it's just me making sure that she doesn't have any distractions and she just keeps her head in it for yeah whatever Whatever it was that I did, I mean, it, I, I don't know that it really would have mattered with the outcome, but it was more support than anything. Um, you know, and I was super, super blessed that that her father um, entrusted me to take his daughter and his wife over to a foreign country to, you know, shoot a match. My wife was with us as well, but, you know, just it was so overwhelming as far as joy watching someone else succeed. And that's kind of where the training thing lies with me is like, I have so much fun watching people just light bulbs go off. Yeah. You know, you tell them something and it's like, you see it rattle around between their ears and then boom, the light bulb lights up. It's like, try that. Yeah. Um, it's super rewarding. Um, and then putting that into the hunting side is the coolest thing is getting people's pictures after they, you know, they go on a hunt and they, they harvest their animal and just, hearing the, the stories from, you know, around camp and all that stuff. It's uh, super rewarding, man. It's, it's super rewarding. Yeah. Well, and, 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 I, and I, I'm going to, I'm going to interrupt because I, I know you won't say this about yourself. So I'm going to, um, so I, I've been, I, I've been very fortunate to get, to get to be good friends with Dan and, um, 
I like the fact that you will say things how it is, and that may rub some people the wrong way, but it's but you are an incredibly honest person. Um, but then, and I've ex in in with like that Navasota match, like I experienced it firsthand, and I saw it in like in your attitude and and how you how you, one how you handled me and just you know your demeanor throughout the second day of giving up your equipment to shoot to another shooter so that he can finish his match and then coach me the second day. Um, you're an incredibly selfless person and, um, about myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know you won't. It, and so that's, that's why I, 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 I encourage people to train with you because you're not going to sugarcoat something and, and let them think that, you know, something that they're something that they, they may be doing wrong is acceptable because you'll correct that. But at the same time, you want nothing but success for that person. And, and it shows in a multitude of ways. And, and that's, and that's one of the reasons I was so excited to, because to, we, we talk all the time, but to have you on the podcast and to get this out to other people, uh, especially those that may be looking at you, you know getting better it's you you i i train training and especially in, in the hunting realm it is so up your alley in your personality that it, it's um it's such a selfless uh uh direction that you're going and and it's 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 remarkable and a lot of people don't embody that and it's 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 just cool um it it's worth it it's i'll i'll, I'll say that it, it, it to put it very shortly but yeah, anyway that. um so give me give me a rundown so for for those that are listening and, and maybe curious to like about like a little bit what we're talking about for hunting give me a rundown of like um E e either your inner hunter gear or like your um uh, or another hunting setup like give me a breakdown of what gear you're running uh, uh like that you're gonna rifle? take e uh rifle tripod binos like you know kind of the whole the whole the whole setup okay so um tripods are really the right stuff tfct 34l i've got my own tag plate uh ultralight tag plate that'll be going with me um I run wee bad bags predominantly, but I also have a couple of Schmedium Armageddon gear bags um, that I've changed the fill in to make them lighter weight for hunting. Uh, binos will be Swaro EL ranges for myself. My wife runs the NL Piers. Um, we'll both have a Kestrel. Uh, and I do. So here's another thing. I, I, I run hard dope. Um, before any hunt, I'm going to zero my gun and I'm going to check data and I will build hard dope off of that. Um, as a, you know, you never know when a battery shits the bed or whatever, um, backpack I run, man, honestly, I run a five eleven tactical. Um, I forget which model it is, but it's, uh, the smaller version. I think it's a 24 liter or something like that. Um, okay. I run, uh, OBI link system. Um, I'll run, uh, two different tabs on each shoulder strap. One will be for the rifle. One is for my tripod. Uh, spotter will be a STC Soro spotter. Um, what other gear? It's pretty much it non-rifle based. Um, I have two different guns going. One's a 25-7 or a 6.5 PRC. Uh, that is a Falcor 7 action. Uh, that's got a benchmark fluted steel barrel on it. Um, I'm a big fan of fluted steel barrels for hunting guns. I'm not, which one of the guns does have a carbon barrel. Um, that is in a Manners LRH that I painted. Uh, Atlas Cal Gen 2 bipod. That's all I own. That's all I'll probably ever own or ever run. Uh, they're bomb proof. And then Hawkins Rings. Actually, that gun is a spur mount, hunter's mount, and it's got a Swaro Z8i. I forget the power, but it's the big one. Um, my main hunting rifle is going to be in a KS1, TS Customs KS1 stock. Um, that's impacts new mbk medium 
And that's a benchmark carbon Sendero seven millimeter barrel on that guy. Um, and then it runs Hawkins rings. And then of course, my old trusty zero compromise five to 27. Okay. So a, a couple, a couple things. So, and this is, and this is things that I've noticed shooting with you and, and just what you listed off. So one, uh, mainly because I, I, I never, I, I don't I actually, yeah, I don't own any fluted barrels. Um, but some of the, the, like the heavy fluted barrels that you run and make weight with, may, you know, uh, NRL, the weight cutoffs, um, dude, it, it blew my mind. That, like the first time I saw some of these setups, um, and what they actually come out weighing. Cause most of yours are M24s with a heavy flute, right? They're M24. So the majority of my, and these are not NRL hunter rifles. These are guns I hunt with. Right. I, just, I had no, honestly, I didn't know what they weighed until they put it on the scale at the very first match I shot. Um, I run lighter weight carbon stocks, either a KS1 or a Manners LRH. Um, my, my primary NRL hunter gun, the gun I've shot the most is my 6.5 PRC fluted M24. Yeah. Uh, it's got one of the impact Titans. And I run Hawkins heavy rings and a Zico five to 27. That gun weighs 14 pounds with a bipod yeah. on it. I mean, it's, it's 13 pounds without the bipod. I mean, they're yeah. not, not super heavy. They're not. Yeah. Um, I think my seven Psalm with the carbon barrel weighs just under 12 pounds. Uh, but yeah, man. And all my hunting guns are set up the same way. They're M24s and they're heavy fluted. Yeah. Well, and so that's so. What I just wanted to I wanted to point that out because it, it it was it it surprised me the first time I saw it. But um, so oh, you that's run... also also at fourteen pounds, it's got a full weight TMB on the end of it too, and that muzzle yeah. break weighs like fourteen and a half ounces. So, so okay, so and that and that was that was another uh, question I wanted I wanted to get into. But okay, so um. So okay, there's a few questions. Um, so first off, I I see and it's it's all over the internet. You know whether it's you know Facebook or Sniper's Hide or you know whatever thing, people get so tied up in the weight of a hunting rifle, and everyone and their dog wants a featherweight, blah blah blah, because. Uh, it's light and you're going to be hiking around with it. And I'm sorry, 99% of you guys, myself included, are not hiking up 10,000 feet to take the, you know, a, a shot at a sheep, you know, up the side of a mountain. Yeah. Where, where do you think is a, is a, uh, for, for generic hunting? Yeah. I'm not talking a very specific, because I do, if you are climbing two miles into the mountains, I think I'm not matters. carrying a 14 pound rifle. Yeah, no. no. But what? But so many people get tied up on this. Where do you think is a good weight for a rifle to end up at? Um, for for a hunting rifle. Well, that's so. That depends on a few things. It depends on the stature of the person. I'm not gonna. Well, my wife, she'll carry around a 13 pound gun, and she's you know five foot tall. Your wife's a badass. Yeah, she 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 is in her own right, that's for sure. <laughs> but the other thing is cartridge. Like I I will never build an eight-pound gun that is a big chambering. Like you're not I'm not gonna build a 300 Norma that weighs seven and a half pounds. That's asinine. It you can't drive the gun. You can't control the rifle. Yeah. You can't. I agree. And you're not gonna see what the hell happened after the gun goes bang. You're just not. Yeah. So let's just talk about like standard hunting cartridges. Uh, some of the yeah, um, yeah, six, like six five three, six five PRC, maybe even like you know in a seven PRC, you know, like the 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 average type thing that someone's going to take hunting. Uh, ten to thirteen pounds. Um, honestly, I don't like rifles that go down into the single digits. This little three oh eight behind me surprisingly shoots very well, and it's not bad. Um, but like my six five PRC. My my seven my seven saw him. That gun actually it'll push you around a little bit, and it's under twelve pounds, but it's still I can still track a shot. 
Because that's yeah. what's most important to me is I want enough ass in the gun where when I'm managing recoil, I want to see what the hell happens. Yep. And I'm not saying you can't do it with a big chambering and a super light gun. You're just going to go through at least a barrel to figure out how to manage the gun. Yeah. You're just going to. Um, I think I'm trying to think what else I have in there. My 6.5 Creed is the same setup as my 6.5 PRC. They are literally mirror images of each other. Um, my wife's gun that I built for NRL Hunter for her is in a Manners Pro Hunter. So it's a little lighter. Um, and it's yeah. a 6.5. But they all they all run the same barrels. But yeah, man, I'd say honestly, ten to thirteen pounds until you get into big, big, big chambers. Which I mean, how many people hunt with a three hundred Arma? I mean, I understand right. the purpose of it, but I, I just don't think you need that light of a gun. I agree. I well, and and I don't think you need to. And that's my thing is like I, I try and I try and talk to people like, do you, have have you ever you know one have you shot a a seven and a half pound rifle you know scoped and everything. And how does it behave versus shooting it? Yeah, it sucks ass. It's dude, it's it's terrible to control. And now I get it. If you're if you're if you're legitimately hiking up the side of a mountain, it serves a purpose. Yeah. Even diehard hunters, most of the time, they are not doing that. No. And you know, and that's why you know that the. the and I agree that 10 to 13 pound range, it's heavy enough that it's very controllable and you can drive the rifle, but it's light enough. You walk around. Yeah. And I just, I just get so sick of reading all, well, it, it, you know, the whole ounces equal pounds and pounds equals pain. It just drive like it, it that's it, it, And And I'm including myself in this. We can all stand to lose five pounds. Go, go on a, go on a freaking, you know, <laughs> jog around the neighborhood a couple of times and drop five pounds. Yeah. And, you know, but whatever. Um, but then the next thing, and, and I think a big part of that, of the weight thing ties into this is, um, so you're, you're a big zero compromise guy, as am I. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've got Z codes on all my um, guns that I use all the time. Um, what do you, what is your take on... Um, what some people may consider as a um, tactical slash, you know, practical type scope on hunting rifles. Like, you know, a lot, you know, cause you say you're running a Zico 5.7. It's not a, it's not necessarily the smallest light of scope out there, but um, I mean, I know what you're going to, I know the reason you run it, but I mean, what's your thoughts on running a um, very, um, beneficial scope you know even if it's heavier the reason i run as eco is number one i, I mean I've, since i came out i've been infatuated with them and i've run them through some shit i mean i've yep. put the that's a big part of it it's trusting your gear right yep um if i drop my gun which truth be told i've dropped my gun off about a five foot object and it landed square on the elevation turret i picked the gun up guess what zero still good Yep. You do that lighter weight optic, which I own Mark Fives too, little pulled Mark Fives. Um, well, and I'm including scopes like that in the. I mean, I, I know we I said Zico, but like scopes like the Mark Five blue pulled, like that 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 is a, a a what I'm trying to describe is a a exposed turret, larger style, um, practical tactical style scope that you know isn't the the 16 ounce. 18 yep. 20 ounce scope that people strive for and and maybe what the benefits of using a, these types of scopes over what you know maybe people may generally well, think of the biggest thing is quick acquisition you know first vocal plane to me is is vital if you're going to take a shot of of any type of distance and by any yep. type of distance i mean beyond 300 350 yards depending on the wind you're shooting and a bullet's going to move yep. um you don't have to dial your wind even though you can but you have a reticle it's first focal plane, so I don't care if you're at the bottom of, of the range or at the top of the range. It's all the same, right? Yep. Um, I do own one second focal plane scope, and uh, it serves its purpose, but it's it's not a long range long range you know scope at all. Same. Uh, and just the ability to manipulate like elevation quickly. Uh, yep. I don't own anything with capped turrets. I just don't. Um, I'm one of the people that I run NLE Zicos. Um, yep. Windows. The elevation's not. 
Uh, yep. I don't break out of habit. I don't break a shot out of a gun without glancing at the elevation turret. I don't. You know, if yes, I understand the argument. Oh, it's against your backpack, or you're moving it around, or it's in and out of case, or whatever. It could get rolled. Well, check your gear before you break the trigger. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's a lot of advantages, and then you know it being robust. You know, let's face it, hunting guns sometimes take a tumble or they get beaten up against a tree. Shit happens. Yep. Uh, you know, there's people out there that have done. I think you and I were talking about the test where they they put their hand over the scope, like I shoot. And applied some pressure. Now that's why I run the Hawkins rings because I got that diving board to put pressure on. Yep. But you know, a lesser scope. There's a reason they weigh less. The tube is thinner. The yep. biggest part of the scope is the scope body. It's thinner, which means it's weaker. Yep. Um, so there, there's a lot of advantages to running more of the tactical, practical type scope in in a hunting scenario. Um, also, man, I mean bigger tubes, glass quality and the higher end practical tactical stuff. I mean, Swarovski is probably the only, I mean, there's some Zeiss stuff out there and maybe Leica that's got pretty, pretty good glass, but I'm kind of a glass snob. I mean, there's not much out there that touches when you get into the, the Zico realm of things. I, I agree. And, and I'm not, and I'm not saying you need to run a Zico on everything, but like, I, I, like I've been, I've been hunting with a Zico 4 to 20 for um, a while and do that. It's unbelievable. Um, and, well, and there's a place for a lower power scope too, right? I mean, if you're hunting dangerous game and stuff like that, yeah, you need a lower power optic. You need something look, you can pick up side picture fast, get your shot off. Right. Uh, that's not what I'm doing with these. It's not what you're doing with these. So for the purposes of what we hunt and the types of hunts that I go on, they, they serve that purpose. Now, I can pick up the reticle in that scope all the way down at the bottom of the mag in fact, magnification range on a four to twenty or a five to twenty seven, where yeah. I can take a shot. Um, yeah. That also just comes down to you know proper training behind the gun, <laughs> and, you know a lot of time behind the gun. You know, yeah. Talk about dry fire. Dry fire builds a a lot of very good habits. Um, you know, and and you know that just has to do with that conscious subconscious thing that we've talked about. But uh, yeah, I, I think the benefits of those heavier tactical scopes are tenfold compared to some of the lighter weight stuff. And the biggest thing is first focal plane. That's a big one. I agree, man. It's just well, it, it for, I think I, personally, I think first focal plane is a must. Um, I I think exposed turrets is a must. Um, and then the the glass quality and you know the the eye box forgiveness and all the other shit that comes with a higher a higher quality scope just especially in a hunting scenario i mean because real i mean realistically match scenarios are are and and i guess mainly more like prs or other or or prone style uh competitions I and mean, it that's you're getting pretty perfect setups and you know in hunting that's very much not going to be the case in in a lot of times and i think that i think it matters a ton and generally for the most of us hunting is in you know late fall or the winter when conditions are less than prime and glass quality comes into play a lot and and then like you said i mean dude i've i've been hiking up hills or whatever and taking a you know i've fallen or, or the rifle's taken a spill or whatever and with those thicker tubes and heavier built you know more robust built scopes it dude it, it can save a hunt i mean because i've had the same thing i've yeah, I've, I've had rifles fall and land on this top. i mean dead nuts on top of the elevation turret from <laughs> not a good height and and keep on ticking <laughs> so oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay so let me ask and then the the other question um and and i i know this is going to be more on the personal preference side of things um but what do you think about um, hunting uh, with muzzle brakes versus suppressors? I hunt with both. I mean, my first trip to Africa was muzzle brakes. This time we're going with suppressors. I've I've hunted with both. Um, either way, I don't. I, I truthfully don't have a preference either way, as long as you have your damn ears. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I actually, I would say for me, my preference 
I actually hunt, I like hunting with a muzzle brake more than I do hunting with a suppressor. And the main reason for that is the majority of rounds down range for me are with a muzzle brake. And a muzzle brake, a, a rifle with a muzzle brake acts different than a, a rifle wearing a can. Yep. Um, different. It's just, it's just different. The gun recoil is completely different. It's not, you know, cans are very pushy. Um, like this time I said, we're bringing cans every round out of those guns, breaking them in and doing low dev is with a can on it. Um, yep. I'm just a bit familiar with the way the gun acts. And, you know, that, that actually brings me to a quick point of guys that hunt and they don't want to shoot competitively, go shoot your gun. Don't be the guy that goes once a year. Yep. Zero is good. Let's go shoot a deer, shoot your gun. I mean, barrels are consumable. They're, they're relatively cheap in the grand scheme of things. Yep. Uh, and I tell guys with factory guns all the time, best two things you can do, especially like on Remington, shoot the shit out of it, get used to it, put a match grade barrel on it, put a good trigger in it. And you will have a better, you will better have a better gun and you'll damn sure know how to drive the rifle. Yeah. So majority of my rounds are down range with a muzzle brake. Um, I don't get the cans out all up. I'm also in Texas, man. It's hot enough in the summer, even with a can cover. Cans, you break a couple rounds, they're hotter than shit. You're fighting Mirage. We got enough Mirage here to fight. You know, put a muzzle brake on it and, you know, you can shoot a little longer. Yeah. Well, and, and so, one, I just, I was curious of your opinion, but I see is, and, and I spend too much time on social media. Um, but I, I see all the time, especially in the NRL Hunter stuff of like, oh, well, these guys are gaming with breaks and da 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 da. And I wanted, to hear a, a real world, you know, thing of it doesn't matter. Um, I I prefer like I like shooting. I love shooting the suppressors because it's just it's so nice. It's it's comfortable. Um, you know all that stuff. But it's not as offensive to others around you. There's that too. You're not pissing everybody off on the range. <laughs> yeah, which you know I'm rocking the uh, yeah. concussion gang shirt. Um, but it, but shooting shooting a break rifle is so much more pleasurable, and 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 personally, I think it's way more efficient of being able to see what what actually happened. Yeah, you know, downrange of did I hit the animal? Did I miss the animal? Where where did I hit on the animal? You know, it's yeah. Uh, so that also brings up a point I was going to make on the the lighter versus heavier gun thing. There's some of these guys that live in states where they're blessed enough to be able to go up and, and, and hunt elk and stuff like that. And there's people that do it by themselves. Well, the difference between a 12 pound gun and an eight pound gun is a difference between you seeing if you hit that animal in the right spot or not. Yep. And that's, uh, that's pretty important. So, yep. Yep. I, I and I, 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 so, so, um, uh... I I actually uh I had my first miss on an animal ever um uh, this past fall. Um and I was using um uh, I don't know if it was the rangefinder's fault or if it was just the conditions, but it was it was very, very overcast. It was super foggy and it was drizzling. And I ranged it at 470. Okay. Um, and I shot and it went it went over the top of it. Yeah. It, but I was able to see it. Yeah. Make a correction, come down and and have success on it. And so and that's and, and I ended up in I ran, when I got went and picked him up, I ranged back to where I was at and ended up being 430 yards. So it was just it was slight. And I don't know if it was a, it, and I might have messed it up because it was like he was standing on a hill next to a mesquite. And I don't know if I arranged the wrong mesquite, you know, or whatever. But being but the whole point of it is being able to uh, control the rifle and see what the hell is going on made all yeah. the difference in the world it's a super important part when you're when you're shooting longer distances yeah uh, i mean aside from fundamentals i mean a lot of people harp on the fundamentals they're obviously very important but the fundamental stuff you can you can get through relatively quickly but it's all the critical thinking things like using a range finder i mean we've talked about that on critically thinking your way through 
if you aren't hitting the target, you need to do something different. And I've told you my sequence of events that I do. I mean, I'll wear a battery out on a rangefinder in a weekend shooting an NRL hunter match. Yeah. I mean, I'll probably wear that button out in those EL ranges before the warranty's up. They'll have to re replace it. Um, you know, I, I range a lot. I range a lot. Yeah. But it's all the process of elimination and making sure the decision I make is the right decision. I do the same thing when I'm hunting an animal. Um, you know, there's times you got to make quick shots, but most of those times it's in a situation where you're not coming off your zero. The animal's close enough. You're not coming off your zero. Right. No. Yeah. Well, um, uh, is there anything you want to, you want to leave, leave us with? Man, y'all just get out there and use your gear. That's, that's the only thing I want to leave everyone with is we spend a lot of money. And one thing I was told by a, a very wise guy that I look up to a lot is, you know, we're, the only thing we own truly in life is time. So, you know, it's, it's the only thing we own. We don't know how much of it we got. We can't inventory it. We can't save it. So get out there and use your shit. Hell yeah. That, that advice for the, for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> old man advice. Yeah. You're old as shit. You're 40 now. Yeah, I am. Thanks for reminding <laughs> me. <laughs> well, dude uh thank you dude thank you for real thank you for coming on I, I we've been trying to get this going for a little bit um guys if you if you want to get more proficient at hunting and shooting give give dan a shout it's raven rifles um he'll be able to get you squared away um with training and a new rifle um it, it you will be glad that you did it um but dude thank you i hope i hope the africa trip goes freaking awesome um you should have your ammo back in a few days and uh <laughs> i i can't freaking wait and and i'm i'm excited to get the videos and to be able to like post post the hunt and all that shit it's it should be badass um yeah. and and i'm my 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 dad advice uh and it's mainly because i was on facebook this morning um quit knocking down people that are doing the same things that we're doing the gun industry and the people shooting guns have zero reason to be attacking each other over how you shoot your rifle we you know especially with the, with the government and the um uh, the outlook on on firearms and the firearms industry right now we should be our number one supporters so quit being a dick and lift up each other and if someone doesn't know how to do something help them learn something that day um because if we don't if we don't protect it no one's going to so <sighs> so i was listening to all kinds of podcasts and shit today and got me all worked up so <laughs> turn that <sighs> shit off that's, that yeah that's a whole nother that's a whole nother topic of bullshit um but guys be be proficient with your shit and and be be supporters of the second amendment because we damn sure need it and and, and it needs to stick around so um dan dude thank you so much um thanks for having me on it's dude it's it's been an honor um I, i'm i'm very thankful to call you a friend and uh and i i hope the the best of success for your business and and i, I know it'll go great i appreciate it man all right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Sorry I missed a few weeks, but hey, we'll be back on top of shit and we'll get going. I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.